We're going to prove that the number zero is less than the number one. To do this, of course, we're going to need the order axioms because this has to do with the order relation on the real numbers. Let's take a minute to review the order axioms. The first order axiom says that between any two numbers, and in this case, we're going to be looking at the two numbers zero and one, exactly one of the three relations, zero is less than one, zero is equal to one, or one is less than zero must be true. We are trying to prove that it's the first one. The second order axiom, transitivity, tells us that if we have three numbers, let's say x, y, and z, if x is less than y and y is in turn less than z, then the smallest number x must be smaller than the largest number z. The last two order axioms tell us how the order relation interacts with our two binary operations, addition and multiplication. The addition axiom is fairly straightforward. It just says that if you have an inequality, you can add whatever number you want to both sides of that inequality. The multiplication axiom is a little bit more complicated. It tells us that if we want to multiply a number on both sides of an inequality, we have to be sure that the number we're multiplying by is greater than zero. In other words, if we think of a number line, the numbers that fall to the right of zero are the numbers that are open to being multiplied by an inequality. And if we do this multiplication, the direction of the inequality remains unchanged. To prove that zero is less than one, we're also going to need a new proof method, a method known as proof by contradiction. The basic idea behind a proof by contradiction is that if we want to prove a statement, we ask ourselves, what would the world look like if that statement were not true? and we take a hard look at that scenario. The goal is to show that if our statement were not true, something would go horribly wrong. And in mathematics, what we mean by something going horribly wrong is that we reach what's called a logical contradiction, something that is logically impossible. Generally, a logical contradiction will have the form of a statement being both true and false simultaneously. This means that the general structure of a proof by contradiction looks like this. Suppose we want to prove that a proposition, let's call it P, is true. What we need to do is take a look at what would happen if P were not true. In other words, we get to make an assumption that P is false. In other words, the negation of P is our assumption. Simply by following this assumption and seeing where it leads, what we hope to do is show that it leads to something that is logically impossible, a logical contradiction. And again, this will generally take the form of some statement, let's say R, being both true and false at the same time. If we can do this, what we've shown is that a world where the statement P is false is impossible because it leads to something that is logically impossible. This means it's impossible for the statement P to be false, which necessarily means that P is true. Let's see how this plays out in our proof that zero is less than one. If we're doing a proof by contradiction, and we're trying to prove that zero is less than one, what we have to do is take a hard look at what the world would be like if zero were not less than one. This means we get to make the assumption that zero is not less than one and follow that assumption wherever it leads. Using the first order axiom, we know that if zero is not less than one, then one of two possibilities remains. Either zero is equal to one or one is less than zero. We also know by looking at the definition of the real numbers that zero is not equal to one. This means we can rule out that possibility. What we're left with is a world where one is less than zero. Now this might look funny, and it's supposed to look funny because we're in an imaginary world where zero is not less than one, but just the statement that one is less than zero is not a logical contradiction. The only way it would be a logical contradiction is if we knew that one was less than zero and one was not less than zero at the same time. And at this point, we have not established that one is not less than zero. In fact, that's what we're trying to prove. So what we need to do at this point is take this assumption and follow it to see if we can dig out a logical contradiction. One thing we might think to do is to bring the one over to the other side of the inequality to show, for example, that zero is less than negative one. We can do this if we take our inequality and apply the third order axiom by adding negative one to both sides. If we do this, the one and the negative one will cancel out and we get zero is less than negative one. 
Again, it might seem weird that a negative number is greater than zero, but it's not a logical contradiction. This is just one of the weird things that would happen in a world where zero was not less than one. However, if we go back and look at order axiom four, it says whenever you have a number that falls to the right of zero, it becomes a number that you're able to multiply on both sides of an inequality without changing the direction of that inequality. Since we've now established that in a world where zero is not less than one, the number negative one is greater than zero, this means that on a number line, the number negative one falls to the right of zero, which means the number negative one is one of those numbers that we can multiply on both sides of an inequality without changing the order of the inequality. If we now take our inequality, zero is less than negative one, we can multiply it on both sides by the number negative one, and since negative one is to the right of zero in this world, that will not change the direction of the inequality. On the left-hand side of this inequality, due to proposition one, we simply have zero. On the right-hand side of this inequality, because of proposition three, we know that the negatives will cancel one another out, and so we're left with just the number one. We now have the inequality zero is less than one, and this, is a problem, because if we go back and look at our assumption, we have that zero is not less than one. This is now a logical contradiction, because we have the statement zero is less than one being both true and false at the same time, which is logically impossible. After reaching a contradiction, we can simply say that since our assumption led to a logical impossibility, our assumption is impossible, which means it's not possible that zero is not less than one. This proves that zero must be less than one, which is the statement we were trying to show.